Hey guys, welcome back to another commentary video. I don't usually start my commentary videos like this, but this one's a little bit different. Usually when I do my commentary videos, I have a little bit of a funny moments and then a little commentary in there and along the side. So they kind of, you know, counteract each other a little bit. So it's not just one or the other. This one is just, just commentary. It's uh well, for the most part, it's a story of something that happened to me yesterday. And I really wanted to tell you guys, cause it was a, it was a crazy experience with, druggies and whatnot it was just it was insane what happens to me anyway so i really want to share it with you guys and uh yeah this is what happened all right so i got a little story to tell you guys uh let's just say i forgot where i live so where i live it's a very uh there's a lot of drugs and i don't know too much about crime but i know there's a lot of drugs where i live you know we have a lot we have a giant drug problem where i'm at i don't know how i forgot that but i did but the craziest thing happened to me and it's just i don't know you hear a lot about stories like this but when it actually happens to you it's like i it, it caught me so off guard it was insane so basically on my way home from work yesterday I see a car that stopped in the middle of the road. It was actually in a turning lane, but it had, it was off. So I assumed it had no gas, which it, it didn't. I see a guy in the passenger seat and a girl, probably somewhere around 40-ish years old. I was guessing at the time, just trying to push the car. And so I was like, you know what? I'll help them real quick. They're probably out of gas. I pulled into a CVS parking lot, which is right next to where they were because they were in the turning lane. As soon as I pulled in there, things start instantly started getting weird because as soon as I started pull rolling down my window, I see her rushing towards my car. I'm just like, oh God, like Jesus. I didn't expect her to rush towards my car like that. It completely caught me off guard. So I finished rolling down my car window and I asked if, you, if they're out of gas. She says, yes. She was asking if I can get them some gas. I said, yes. I figured out I would help them out. You know, if I was out of gas, I would want someone to do the same thing for me. That was my first mistake. So when I, after I offered her gas and whatnot, I told her I have no cash on me, but I can go get her some gas if she has a gas can. She said she doesn't have a gas can. And as she was saying that, someone came rolling up in an SUV and she's like, oh, that's my cousin. They have a gas can. And as soon as she said that, she went to go talk to them. The guy came out of the car and she's like, hey, I know you. Five well, no count. shit, you know him. You, you just said he's your cousin. And he had a huge confused look on his face. So I'm just like, all right, well, that's a little fishy. And then he told me he has a gas can, but it's at his house. So you have to go across, you know, a couple blocks away to go get it. And I said, all right, just hurry up because I got things I want to do tonight. So hurry up, go get your gas can. I'll wait here. And so he went to go get his gas can. And as soon as he went to go do that, she came back to me and started talking. To me. And she was like, I'm not going to lie to you. I really need a pack of cigarettes. And I was like, no, I just, I, I'll get you some gas, but I don't want to do cigarettes. I don't want to buy you cigarettes. And then she asked me two times after that. She's like, I'm not going to lie to you. Can you please give me a pack of cigarettes? And I'm just thinking to myself, well, first of all, you're not lying to me. You're just asking for a pack of cigarettes. Second of all, I already told you no, so I don't know why you're still asking me. And then she gave me a whole spew of a sad story saying she just moved here from Michigan. She has kids and they have no food. So now she's pulling out my heartstrings. I'm like, all right. I mean, how, how much do you want? I don't have a lot of money, so what, what are you wanting? She's like, well, if you just go into CVS and give me a $20 bill, and that'll be good. I'm like, all right, so we'll go into CVS. I'll, get, I'll do cash back. I'll get you a $20 bill. I'll be on my merry way. Now, before I go any further with the story, my girlfriend actually took my debit card that day. So all I had was credit cards on me. So no cash, no debit card, just credit cards. After I said yes, I'll give her $20. I get out of my car, and we start walking into CVS, and... On our way into CVS, she said the weirdest fucking thing to me. Like, it's, it made me very uncomfortable. As soon as I got in my car and we start going there, she says, wow, you are so fucking hot. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, what? What the fuck did you just say to me? I didn't say that, but I was thinking that. And then she was like, I can't, I can't make this up. But then she was like, I would totally fuck you. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know what? Thanks for the compliment, but uh, yeah, I'll pass. You know, I'm the, I'm good. I don't want, I don't want any of that. It just, it, it made me so uncomfortable and it was so weird. And I just, I it completely caught me off guard. I was not expecting that like by any means. So after that weird ass conversation happened, we finally get our asses in the CVS. I go in there, I locate the cashier, asking if I can have cash back. She says I gotta buy something first. I'm like, well, shit, fine. There's nothing I want, so I'll buy her her cigarettes and, I, and I'll get my $20 cash back. Sadly, I didn't know this at the time, but apparently you can't get cash back on a credit card. Little did I know. So I just bought her cigarettes for nothing, basically. So after I basically got denied the cash back, I ask her, what am I supposed to do now? She says, well, there's a ATM, you know, a couple feet down. Just go use that. I'm like, all right, fine. 
So I stick my card in that bitch, then asks me for a pen. As far as I'm concerned, unless your credit card is through a bank or connected to your bank of somehow, I don't know, maybe I'm not, I'm, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but as far as I'm concerned, my credit cards have never had pens. So I'm, I'm confused as hell, so I'm trying to figure that out. I'm like guessing my pen a bunch of times and whatnot, and I just, I couldn't figure it out. But while I was doing that, the crazy girl starts talking to the cashier. And she, and she was saying how, oh, she just saw her a couple days ago, her hair so beautiful and whatnot. And I'm just thinking to myself, wait a minute. A couple days ago, you told me you just moved up to here from Michigan. Now, granted, a couple days and just moving could be relatively close. I mean, that is, you know. But just the way she talked to her, she talked to her in a way that she knew her. So I just, and it just didn't seem right to me. And she's acting all kind of like jumpy and sketchy and whatnot. So it just... I knew something was up with her. I just didn't quite know what. I saw. I this, what, this is at this point. I started guessing she was on drugs, but I had no actual like confirmation that she was. So I'm still being a nice guy uh, in getting her her money, or at least trying to, anyways. Watch, watch my side. Then we both used my hole. As she was talking to the girl, she started talking to her about me. If you get my drift and I'm just sitting there like, all right, this is really, really weird. You're talking to the cashier about me sexually and it is not, not fun for me. This is not cool. <laughs> Another girl walks in, it's a customer and she goes straight to the customer and starts asking her for money. And so at this point, she's asking all these people for money. I'm starting to get irritated at this point. It's very obvious. She's on drugs. She's just wants to get high, but it's like, I already told her, I would give her money and she is actually out of gas as far as I'm concerned She's actually out of gas and I already told her I'd give her money So it's like I feel really bad to tell her like no because you're on drugs. I think you're gonna use it to get high I, I just I don't know. I feel way too bad to be like that. So I continue trying to get the money out You know, it's like I like to think I'm an asshole and I would like to think when I'm put in that situation I will be an asshole, but I was put in that situation yesterday and I was not an asshole. I, I was not who I thought I was. I thought I was a much meaner person as good as it sounds And I couldn't bring myself to not give her money or at least try to anyways I actually I ended up not being able to give her money, but that's because I just I literally couldn't I tried I really did I don't know I, I thought I would have been more annoyed than I actually was knowing probably gonna use some of it for not food and gas but I don't know. I, just, I don't know. Again, I felt bad. I was already in the middle of doing it, so I figured I'd just do it. Screw it. I finally get done fiddling with the ATM. I could not get my money out, so I went to go tell the I went to go apologize to the girl that I couldn't do it. So I went to go turn around and look for her to apologize, and she was gone. I asked the girl, and she's like, "Oh yeah, she just got done asking her for, her for money." And then as soon as she said no, she left. I'm like, "Okay, well, that was kind of quick. Hopefully my car's not getting robbed because it's on the other side of the parking lot." So I hurry up and go out there to see, see what's going on and her and the male were both uh, Relatively close to my car not like they were peeking through it But kind of just standing there as soon as I exit CVS and I see them standing there She yells across the parking lot asking if I have a lighter So eventually once I get up to her I go to answer a question. I tell her no, I don't have a lighter I don't smoke well. She's like well. I don't either. I just bought you cigarettes. What do you mean? You don't smoke. She's like, oh, well, yeah, I smoke these what the hell did you think I was talking about, crack? So eventually we get up to her car to get ready to start pushing it into the CVS parking lot because the dude's not there with the gas can yet and I, I don't have all night. So I was like, all right, let's start pushing your car. So the male's in the passenger seat. Me and her get behind the car and we go to push it thinking it's a neutral. Well, it, it goes up a little bit, then it stops. Clearly it's still in park. So I, I go around, I'm like, hey, yo, gotta put it in neutral, man. He says, okay, we go to push again. The bitch is still in park. I'm like, all right. So at this point, I'm starting to get irritated because I've already been dealing with these people for like 20 minutes trying to buy them crap and be on my merry way. And so I go up to him again. I ask him what he's doing and he's sitting there like pulled on the, actually, I don't know what it's called. The thing that's, you know, for drive and neutral and reverse and all that, he's sitting there yanking on it in the passenger seat. So clearly he's not pressing on the brake. So I tell him like, listen, dude, you got to hold on the brake to put it down in neutral. And he starts talking to me. Well, should I say he starts mumbling to me? He's completely 
like I can't even understand the guy. So I go, I go to the back of the car. I tell her she can't, he can't put it in neutral because he's not in the driver's seat. She starts screaming and saying, "Oh, I know how to drive my fucking car." And I'm like, "I never said you did it. I, I just said he can't do it." So she hops in there, puts it in neutral, and comes back. As soon as we get ready to push, another car pulls up in the CVS parking lot, which is right next to us. Uh, a little old lady comes out. She looks maybe 50-ish, something like that. Maybe 60s. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. And uh. She, so she gets ready to help start pushing and the girl asks her for money, the, the crazy girl. She's like, no, 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 I, I'm not here to give you, I'm not here to give money. I'm just here to help you push. It's all I can do. She's like, okay, would well, you at least have a, a lighter? And she's like, why? What are you smoking, crack? She's like, no, no, I'm just, I want to light my cigarette. She's like, oh, well, I don't care about that. If you're smoking crack, I could help you out. And I was just like, what? <laughs> so what you're telling me is someone's out of gas. I go help, help them. And one I think is drunk and the other one is clearly on something. I don't know what. And then as we're getting ready to push a car, an old lady comes up and I'm assuming she's on crack. And uh, my assumption was right because we made out, we locked eyes for a second. I tell you what, the, her iris, the, the, the blue part was, uh, it was a beautiful blue. That's probably because it was counteracted with the opposite color, red. And I'm not talking about bloodshot red. I'm talking about her eyes were redder than the devil's dick red. Like, it was just ridiculously insane. Like, you know the white part of your eyes where it's just, you know, supposed to be white? She had no white part of her eyes. It was all just pure red. Woohoo! Double kill, baby! So, we all start pushing. Me and the three non sober completely intoxicated people we all start pushing her car and as we start doing that there's a cop on the other side and they're all driving towards us and another car speeds out of a parking lot completely cuts the cop off and then floors his engine so naturally the cop turns his lights on and pulls him over right in the cvs parking lot where we parked and the girl i was and the girl i was originally helping said i hope he doesn't stop us me and my uncle have warrants out for our arrest. Nice. So that's, you know. So that just adds on top of that craziness. So eventually we start getting the car pushing. We're getting going. We're getting somewhere. And as we're pushing the car, this dude is like completely not steering it. He's steering it into the, this is a four lane road. It's two lanes each way. And he's completely steering it into the other lane. Like he's in almost in the middle of the road. And I'm yelling at him to turn the wheel back into his lane. And I'm assuming the cop heard me because he was outside of his car talking to the guy he just pulled over. And so he walks over to us, he's only a few feet away. And he was telling the guy to pull into his own lane. And he was asking why he's in the passenger seat, which is, I was asking the same damn question. I'm yelling at him, the cops yelling at him. We're trying to get the car in the right lane. He's in B Eventually, we get the car into the CVS parking lot. And so, once we finally get it in there, the crackhead girl was explaining to the cops she was just helping push the car. I'm assuming she's scared because she's probably high as hell. And the other girl was saying how she just moved here from Michigan or something like that. And so, before anything went down, I'm like, all right, I'm out, the car's in the CVS parking lot, I did my thing, I was trying to be a good guy and just help him with gas and whatnot, turned into this giant ordeal of druggies and cops and her wanting to basically rape me. As soon as we got the car parked, the cop was talking to them, I just fast walked to my car and I drove away. I was out, I was not dealing with that no more. All I can say is, thank God I did not have my debit card because I would have been out 20 bucks. Although I am out dollar 98 to that black and mild or whatever the hell it was. You, you owe me a dollar dollar 88 woman. At this point, I'm driving home. I, I that was enough crazy for me for one day, but it wasn't because on my way home I I saw the weirdest thing. Well, probably not weirder than what just happened, but it, it was people, man. You know, it's people. As I'm driving home, I see someone in front of me turning the turning signal, so I assume they're turning into a driveway. No, they skip the driveway. They turn into a yard, do a U-turn in the yard, drive out, and go the other way. Clearly, that probably wasn't their house that they did the U-turn in, and there was literally a driveway right next to the yard. So, a random person drove through someone's yard to do a U-turn. People, man, I don't understand why people are... Oh, man. 
So basically, I guess the moral of the story is don't help strangers. Don't be a nice guy because yeah, yeah, don't be a nice guy because it don't, it don't go good. So that's all I have for this video, guys. Sorry if the story was pretty long. I think it came out to like 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, I couldn't think of a shorter way to say it without taking away a lot of the key points. I it's my first time doing storytelling, so it's I have to get used to it a little bit. You know what I mean? So, and the, the future ones will definitely be much better, I hope. And uh, yeah, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys watched the whole video. And if you guys did, thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. They're upstairs. No, no, never mind. They're downstairs. No, they're upstairs. No, maybe they're downstairs. I can't tell. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Where, where are they? Are they downstairs? <laughs> where are they? Oh, they're in the middle. All right. <laughs> I was. I was so wrong. <laughs>